edition of Internews. My name is Monica and this is Maria. Good morning. Today we'll be holding a special broadcast about the Middle East. We will be talking about its culture, historical background and current events. So what is the Middle East? I'm glad you asked. Well, the Middle East is a region located in the Asian continent, between the Mediterranean Sea and the Indian Ocean. In this region, humanity gave its first footstep ever thanks to the Persian and Babylonian civilizations. Most people don't know this, but actually three of the today's main religions were born in this region, Christianity, Judaism and Islam. Keep that later in mind since we will be talking about it and it's special. Amal, thank you for coming here today. Thanks for having me. We were just about to talk about how women experience gender discrimination in the Middle East due to Islam. You'll see, most people think this situation is due to Islam, but it goes further than that. Some of the most important aspects that institutionalize Arab misogyny aren't actually Arab. They are British, French and Ottoman. These foreigners ruled us for centuries and twisted our culture to accommodate their demands. Uh, one of their favorite tricks was to buy the submission of men by offering complete power over women. Oh, I had no idea. Most people don't know this. I mean, after centuries of Western colonialism, bombings and invasion, Arab men can dismiss the calls for gender equality as just another form of imposition. And how does a religion affect the gender roles in the Middle East? Well, I believe patriarchy has no single culture or religion. However, I must say there are some aspects to Islam that may seem odd to the Western world. Some may even say that they are a form of oppression towards women. Can you name some of these examples? Well, for instance, Monica is wearing a yellow t-shirt. Yellow is a color strictly banned from Islam. It is seen as a sacred color that must only be employed for religious purposes. Is it true women can't work as anything other than housekeepers? This is true. In some countries, women are even prohibited from attending school or closing any type of business deal with a man. Another thing most people don't know is that women can publicly laugh aloud. And how can we fight the misogyny and gender discrimination? Well, unless all the contributing causes are acknowledged and fought, as dangerous as it may be to do so, these things will continue. If you want to fight patriarchy but stop short at criticizing religion, you're not fighting patriarchy, period. I guess we can all agree that achieving the right to educate women would be the basis of a long-lasting change that could eventually topple patriarchy. There have been multiple activists that have encouraged awareness through social media in the last couple of years. Okay, this is true. Women who are not able to access education can now thanks to the use of social medias. <laughs> the group Girls Not Brights who is called Abad. Abad, how are you? Fine, thank you. And you? Fine, thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Abad is part of the group who led the protest, hashtag Andres522. This protest uh, has as an objective to repeal the article uh, 522 of the Lebanese Penal Code, uh, which stated that rapists could avoid prosecution if they married their victims. Hashtag Andres522 was launched in 2016. We wanted to state that women have the right to refuse marrying their rapists and to end their stigmatization. I've also heard that families uh, many times um, they force their daughters to marry their rapists because the family honors is at stake and that must be horrible. Yes, that is true. It is completely terrible for, the, for women that they have the pressure of their families. Due to connection problems, we needed to change our location, but here we are again with a bad, a member of the Girls Not Brides group. I was going to tell you that I'm Mexican and I've seen here in Mexico and in many countries of Latin America that um, there are women that are oppressed by men and this has been happening for a long time, for many years and decades. 
And I think it is important for uh, us to recognize that even here in Mexico, we have the same kind of situation. I have to say, I totally agree with what you're saying. Uh, women not only in Mexico nor in Middle East, but all around the world feel, or I believe uh, just only once a minimum in their lives have felt that they are less than men since men have uh, treated them and make them feel like they are not, uh, they do not deserve uh, the same things as men. Like I was saying, I want to inspire other women and to believe in me, uh, to stand up for their rights, to make men believe they deserve the same things. And I think that the key to all of this, to solve this problem, is to educate boys and girls from uh, when they are children, when they are uh, little kids, so that when they are uh, uh, they are bigger, they uh, do not have any problem with this. Exactly. So the key here is to educate uh, children into respecting uh, the justice uh, from both genders. And thank you very much for this interview. It has been a great pleasure to have you here. It has been a pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much. This has been an special interview with Abad, a member of the Girls Not Brides group. Back to you. Thanks, Maria Jose. It was really great to know all this information about the current situation of misogyny in the Middle East. On the next week's special, we will be talking about Latin America. Thanks for joining us. Uh -huh.